Hey everybody, this is Brian with Easy Retriever Training and today we're going to talk about teaching an old dog new tricks as we, uh, I, I'm going to show you how I taught Lady at six years old how to hunt for sheds. Uh, before we get to the video though, make sure you click the subscribe button and make sure you click the little notifications bell so that you get notified every time we post up a new video. Alright, let's talk about teaching Lady how to look for sheds. Okay, before we get into the actual uh, throwing this around and letting Lady retrieve it, uh, let me let me just tell you a little bit about this particular um, tool or this training aid. Uh, it's clearly not a real antler. This is one that I bought. I think everybody should buy one of these when introducing a dog, whether it's a new puppy or an old dog like what we're going to do today. Uh, you ought to buy this because th there's a couple of benefits. Number one, it's way more flexible. Uh, if you've got a dog, an older dog that's really, really amped up about retrieving and you start throwing this for him, it's possible that she's going to just charge onto it and poke herself in the eye or the or inside the mouth. And, uh, and that's going to turn her off to this. She's going to then become wary of and uncomfortable with anything that has this shape. And so you get one of these that's it's hard-ish, but it's still soft enough that it's not going to do a lot. It's not going to do a lot of damage. It's going to poke them so that they kind of learn how to um, that they to teach them that they need to be soft. But it's not going to inflict any pain to the point that you're going to make them uh, antler shy. Um, the other benefit to this is it feels like some of the other uh, bumpers or other other retrieving toys that we've used uh, over the years uh, with Lady, and so in her mouth it feels comfortable. It's something that she she can get used to pretty quick. Uh, the other thing that I start with right away is this. It's rack wax. This particular one I like it because it's small. It fits in my pocket. This one's by uh, I think it's Tom Dawkins who does this. You can get a hold of those at Dawkins.com. I'll put a link down below in the sh in the uh, description. Um, but this this is just uh, I use this in the very very beginning. Um, it's used to uh, replicate the smell of of the bone, the antler, a little bit of hair, and some blood uh, on a regular antler. The only thing that's going to smell is maybe this part right here. But instead of just putting it on there so that it's real, you know, so that it's real life, I'm going to apply it all over the antler. Really, I'm going to be very, you know. I'm going to put it all over it. Uh, this is going to make this thing smell about a hundred times more powerful than a regular antler would. And you might ask, why would you do that? Um, this clearly is not a real life scenario. Um, uh, it's it typically, well, by the time we get out into the field, I'm going to quit using the rack wax um, altogether so that she's relying on and, and looking just for that that literal smell that's out there. The other thing I don't want to do is I I believe that dogs can smell at such a level they can tell the difference. Even as good as this stuff is, they can tell the difference between um, man-made antler smell and what's what's really out there. Uh, and that's okay. At, at first when we're introducing them, I just want her to know that there's something different. Uh, I'm going to change up the commands a little bit. I like to use the, the command find the shed. Uh, and so when I throw this out there, I'm going to say find the shed. She's going to start recognizing a different shape uh, as well as a different smell. And then when we start hiding it around the yard, uh, she'll she'll know to, she'll already have started to put two and two together that this smell goes with this shape and goes with the command find the shed. So let's go get Lady and I'll show you just kind of how we get started. All right, so Lady already loves to retrieve, and so I'm just going to use this just like, hey, get back here, sit, 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 stay. I'm going to use this just like a regular bumper. It'll sit. Uh, and I'm just going to toss it back, get her really excited. Hop up, hey, hey, hop up, hey, right here, right here. Good girl, right here. Good girl, come here, come here. All right, leave it. Good girl, all right. Good girl. Okay, yeah, uh oh. Good girl, leave it. All right. Now, if she, if she starts to bobble it or fumble it a little bit as she's getting used to that, don't worry about that. That's not a big deal. Um, you don't want her to ever let it, have her get the chance to kind of sit down and start gnawing on it. Um, I know there are some people who like to give their, their dogs antler chews uh, from the time they're little pups just to get them used to it. I've, I've never done that. I, again, I just started with Lady last year, um, but I've always kind of felt like a lot like with birds. I didn't want my dog to get into the to get the idea that this is their toy. The idea is when they find one of these, they bring it back to me. So, 
Um, the next step is to just start hiding it in different places. Um, again, I, it's, I'm just going to start putting it behind bushes, making her go, making her look a little bit harder. Um, so I'm, but I'm still going to let her watch what I'm doing. So, I'm, lady, sit, sit, stay. All right, find the shit. Find the shed. Good girl. Good girl. Come on. Right here. Right here. Good girl. Right here. Come here. Come here. Leave it. So you might ask, well, why did I mean? I let her watch me. She knew right where it was. Why? What good does that do? Um, it just starts to ingrain the fact that it's not going to be in the middle of the yard every single time. The next step then in this transition process is I'm gonna take her out in the front yard. I'm gonna have one of my kids put this just out anywhere in the backyard, uh, out in the open. Then I'll, from the front yard, I'll send her into the backyard to come find it. Uh, and then she'll bring it back to me. We'll do that a few times. We'll, we'll do that as a repetition. Then we'll start hiding it, you know, where she doesn't get to see, where she's in the front yard. You can all, all you can do this if you've got a small dog. I don't do it with the big dog because she tears the house up. But with a little puppy, you can do this inside. You can do it in different rooms, hide it behind couches and stuff like that. Um, but with a big dog like this, I like to just do it in my backyard. Okay, so I've got my daughter. She's just gone back to put the antler. I'm gonna now, uh, when she gets back, I'm just gonna send Lady back into the yard and see if she see how she does. Lady, find the shit. Find the shed. Find the shed. Find the shed. Go on, find the shed. That a girl. And again, this isn't her first time. It's kind of hard to show you what it looks like with a brand new dog. But but basically, if you do the first step enough and get her the idea of what find the shed means, um, then you can just say, okay, lady, find the shed, find the shed. And it doesn't take her too long before she, she really figures out what she's doing. Lady, find the shed, find the shed. So you might ask why I don't go back there with her and you might have to do that for the first couple of times with your dog. Um, at this point, like I say, she's, it's hard to show you exactly what it's going to look like with a dog that's never seen it before. Lady's been doing this for a while. Uh, at this stage, one of the reasons why I don't, uh, hey, sit. One of the reasons why I don't go back there with her is because I want her to know that the hunt is on her. I want her to get out of, from underneath my feet. It's really common for Labradors, um, especially with shed hunting, for them to kind of be right under your feet the whole time. You want to get them out there exploring, running around and searching, using their nose and using their eyes. So now what we're going to do, we're going to do this again, but I'm going to let my daughter hide it a little bit more carefully. This will probably take her a little bit more time uh, to find it, it, but it's just going to kind of increase that, that, that prey drive, that search drive, and again, start ingraining the fact that these things aren't going to be out in the open all of the time. So let me give this back to my daughter. Nope, you stay, sit. Uh -huh. Yeah, kind of stick it behind the bushes. Mm -hmm. Lady, find the shed. Find the shed. Good girl. All right, come here. Hey, right here. Hey, bring it to me. Good girl. Okay, so there you go. That, that's your initial stage and that's what you're gonna do with these. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna introduce her to the, uh, the silhouettes I mentioned. So let me go grab those and then we'll, uh, I'll show you the next phase in, in teaching your dog how to, how to find antlers. So you can see I've got my shed silhouette planted in the ground there. And then at the bottom, uh, I just, I, at the bottom I've just put the, the antler, the, the retrieving antler. And the idea here is just to get the dog using her eyes uh, rather than just receive, re relying on her nose. I want her to do both for sure, um, but I want, her to, I want her to have her head up. I want her to be looking around and looking for the antlers. Um, the purpose of the shed is, or the purpose of the silhouette is that. It's just to train them to get their eyes open, get their heads up, um, and start looking around. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same thing that I did before. I just, I'm going to start out here. I'm going to get her, um, I'm going to send her over to get it. She's already found it, it looks like. Um, all right, bring it over here. I'm going to let her, um, I'm just going to go put it over there several times and just let her 
realize um, that hey, at the base of this antler silhouette is there's going to be a prize. Um, eventually, she's going to start queuing in, and when she comes into the backyard, she'll start looking for that antler, that that silhouette. Uh, and she'll race right over to it. And so then we'll t do what just what we did before. We'll take her into the front yard. Uh, we'll move the silhouette around, put the antler at the bottom of it. Uh, and then when she comes in the backyard, she should see that silhouette right away and beeline right for it. Uh, and then this is going to be what ha what helps us make a transition away from the yard, out into the woods, or out into the fields. Um, each time you transition in dog training from one step to another, one of the things that you want to do is you want to bring something from the initial stages of training with you. Um, something that's going to help the dog bridge that. The more, the more that you can bring with you into a new training situation, the more comfortable your dog's going to be and the easier that transition's going to be. Um, and so when we go back out, when, when we move places, when we go from the yard to a field, I'm going to take and I'm going to go back to this, I'm going to go back to the rack wax, uh, we're going to use the silhouettes, um, and we're going to do everything we can to make it as familiar as possible and then slowly remove those things out in the field. And then when we make a new transition to, say, the, the woods or the trees, uh, again, we're going to bring back the, the silhouettes. We're going to use the old dummies. Uh, uh, you've got a long ways to go before you've got yourself a shed dog. But if you get these first initial steps down, just some of the stuff that we've shown you so far, if you do this over and over and over again, even with an old dog, you won't have any problem teaching an old dog this new trick. And then when it's time, when, it's, when you're ready to go out into the shed, or go out and look for sheds, um, you'll have a dog that won't be uh, overwhelmed because you've got, you've made too big of a jump from you know the yard to out in the trees. Basically, if you try that, basically you're going to go out and, <laughs> and wonder you know what you've been doing because your dog's not going to know anything. She's going to be completely unfamiliar uh, with what your expectation is. So make sure you're taking little baby steps. Um, check out the next couple of videos that we've got as we transition to a field and then a field with cover, and then we'll have a video where we'll actually take you up into the trees and show you how we we introduce a dog with the silhouettes, the rack wax, um, and then I'll also show you how we, you know, what we do with uh, with the sheds and how we get real sheds. Uh, you don't want to spend too much time with this. Uh, eventually, you do want to get your dog on a real shed, and we'll do that in the next video. So make sure you're looking for that. Uh, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure that the little notification bell is, is selected so that when we do come out with new videos on shed hunting, whether that's our own trips or tips on getting your dog ready to go out and find your own sheds, uh, you, you don't, you don't want to miss those. So we'll check you. We'll, we'll find you in the next video. And I always hate how these things end. I'm, I'm never really sure how to end them.